Our world is riddled with inconsistency. Why do some go hungry and others have more than enough is something that I've thought about for as long as I can remember. <laughs> Many circumstances beyond one's control play a critical role. Your postal code, your ability to get an education, your support system, your gender, your race, your economic status. I'm Sharon Srivastava, and my husband Gorov and I founded the Gorov and Sharon Srivastava Family Foundation. It is because of my husband's unwavering commitment and service that we're here today. And we're honored to have partnered with the Atlantic Council, Fred Kempe, the Ministry of Defense of the Republic of Indonesia, and the Coordinating Ministry of Maritime Affairs and Investment of the Republic of Indonesia, my dear friend Annie and her husband, Pahashim, on this most important forum about the state of global food security. Thank you for attending and for being part of the conversation with us. As an American, I live in part of the world which thrives on abundance. We pride ourselves on equality and on philanthropy. But sadly, we do still have millions who go hungry every single day. In Los Angeles, where I live with my husband and our children, we have astronomical rates of hunger. Neighborhoods have become food swamps with people unable to find accessible, affordable, and nutritious food choices. And we're talking about one of the wealthiest cities in the wealthiest country in the world. Nearly 30 million American children rely on their school lunch as their sole nutrient-rich meal of the day. And while great programs have been implemented to ensure that they get fed at school, one meal a day is not enough for a developing child. When my children come home from school each day and make a dash to the fridge, I know it's stocked with healthy options for them. But I know that for far too many mothers, that's not the case. So many mothers and fathers are forced to make the impossible choice every day of buying food or letting their kids go hungry so that they can afford other basic necessities, food or health care, food or transportation to work. And it shouldn't be an either-or scenario. Food insecurity is everywhere. And regardless of location, the impact on a child and a family can't be overstated. I have seen children unable to attend school or to get an education that could help lift them and their families up out of poverty simply because they don't have enough food to fuel their bodies and their brains. Far too many children and adults don't know when their next meal will come. Nearly a hundred years ago, a covenant was created. The Universal Declaration of Human Rights in 1948 established food as a basic human right. It was intended to ensure that our nations protect people from hunger, from starvation. And that's nearly 80 years ago that our nations united to speak in one voice and say, food, is a human right. Yet still, these impossible choices between food or other necessities are being made by parents around the world each and every day. So what are we going to do about this? Today, we are called upon to have these difficult conversations. And I implore you, as you're doing through these panels and conversations, to reflect on what we have done to help achieve food security and on what we, as a collective, must do to move forward. And with that, it's my distinct pleasure to now introduce Christopher McLennan, Canada's Deputy Minister 
of International Development and personal representative of the Prime Minister for the G20 Summit to the stage to offer his insights into how Canada has been stepping up as a global food security leader and where its food and humanitarian priorities lie ahead of the G20 Summit and beyond. Thank you.